inspiring? Is it as bad as everyone says? Yeah, it really is, man. Like, um, like if you, uh, they try and make you quit. Yeah, his uh, his one teammate came from Norway to train with us, and I remember he's a really tough guy, and he was over there sparring with Ben Rothwell. Like, <laughs> stop hitting me, man. Like, it's different because there is we spar here. It's good sparring. And you learn. It's technique, and you go hard. But in Iowa, it's like. It sucks because sometimes you make a mistake, you get knocked out. So you let, that's how you learn. Like I can't tell you how many times I've seen guys get knocked unconscious, and you're like, it just a lot of guys it uh, changes the way they fight because they're not relaxed to get good. They're always fighting to survive, so it changes the way you fight, and you're scared to get knocked out in practice. So sometimes you get gun shy because you're afraid to you're afraid to do something and mess up because you're not going to get head kicked. So I've seen like. Robbie Lawler knocked people out. Drew McFedry has knocked people out. Like heavy-handed guys, you know. Uh, Tim Sylvia is knocked out. He's he's notorious for that. He just he knocks out every time there's a new guy. You just see Tim Sylvia, six foot eight, three hundred pounds, walking around with a smirk on his face because he knows this guy is going to get hurt. And the guys in there, a lot of times, oh, I, I trained in pro boxing gym and I did this and I, I train here and I do this and they're like, all right. After the first round, the guys like on the ground like he's bleeding his, his legs purple you know he's ready to throw up and that's just that's the way the past gym is so it's just the way it is man it's not i'm not saying it's the right philosophy but it's pat's philosophy and it's funny because i was in that mentality for so long for six years training like that and when i sometimes uh, i go to other gyms and kenny knows and Val like the gym in canada i, I leg kicked a guy three times and he quit and he's like, I'm done. And he left practice. And I was just like, I'd never seen anything like that before. Because at Pat's gym, they lock the door. You can't get out. And it's like, you can't. I mean, you can't. I tried to do that when I first got there. I was, I remember leaving leaving practice in tears. And I would go home. I just moved to Iowa. left my whole family and all my friends and moved across the country to Iowa. And I used to go home at night and just sit there and think, what am I doing, man? Like, is this what MMA is about? Maybe I shouldn't do this. I actually thought about leaving like the first month I was there. I couldn't even sit down on the toilet and take a shit because my whole leg was purple. You know, I couldn't even bend my leg. And like, I had black eyes every day. Like every time I had two black eyes and I'm like, this sucks, man. Like, this isn't what I signed up for. And I told my roommate, I go, man, uh, I'm leaving, man. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And he's like, he has been there for a while. And he's like, oh. So he told Pat the next day that I was leaving. Pat came and got a hold of me. He's like, you know what, man? He's like, He's like, you almost survived the hard part. He goes, you're already a month or two in. He's like, if you leave now, you're going to regret the rest of your life. And he's like, you can fight in the UFC. You can fight in this show and that show. And you have potential, man. He's like, if you leave and go back to Pennsylvania, I'm going to drive there and get you and bring you back. He's like, only a couple more months, man. And you'll be, sooner or later, you're going to be the guy kicking people's asses. And so sure enough, now, you know, at the gym, I'm one of the senior guys where I feel like I've kind of, I'm one of the better guys, so it's time for me, I feel like, to move on, you know. But uh, it, it's true, you know, and it's everybody, you guys. Rory Markham was one of my roommates, uh, Ben Rothwell, you know, uh, Bart from the IFL, all these guys, Ryan McGivern, I mean, Robbie Lawler's one of my good friends, and same thing happened to all those guys. Uh, usually all the best guys that came to Pat's gym thought about quitting or they broke down in tears. Matt Hughes used to cry in practice, you know. Uh, Spencer Fisher was 220 pounds when he got there and get ass kicked every day. And all these guys were like, I remember Josh Neer, one of the toughest guys I know, got the shit kicked out of him every day. And it was like, what am I doing? And eventually, you you get so used to it, you become the guy kicking people's asses, but you don't even realize it's happening. So that's just the way it is, man. Like, when I first got there, my first day, I drove 15 hours to get there. And I just showed up to practice. I'm like, ah, I'm just going to watch practice, hang out tonight. I showed up, just get out of the car. I was drinking, like, coffee and diet Mountain Dew and fast food the whole way. I tried to stay awake and I got there and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go watch practice. I showed up and Pat threw me a pair of gloves and shin pads. He's like, get in there, man. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're sparring. I was like, just get out of the car, man. I slept in like two days. He's like, get in there. So I was like, all right. Can't say no. Put my shit on and had to spar with uh, Tony Fricklin, Jeremy Horn, Tim Sylvia. And I was the new guy, so Tim Sylvia and those guys didn't like me then. So I remember getting spun in circles with leg kicks and getting up and getting kicked in the body. And just, I remember getting knocked out every time and going, and looking up and Pat would be like, why'd you come here, man? Are you gonna get back up or not? And I'd get back up for one, for one more punch or one more kick. And I'd be back down. 
and look at me and be like, hey, we got three minutes left in this round. <laughs> I'd be like, because I, was, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for a gym like that. Like, I was tough where I came from in my gyms back home with all my buddies, but I was nothing compared to the guys that were already in the UFC. And, and you're, when you're on your hands and knees and you're ready to quit, and you look around, you see, like, Robbie Lawler's shadow box and looking at you. Jens Pulver's calling you a pussy. Jens Pulver's calling you a pussy, and what are you doing, man? And Pat's like, you're gonna get up or not? And Tim Sylvia's 300 pounds, six foot eight, standing there waiting for you to get back up, and you're like, fuck, man. <laughs> so you do it, you do it, and I'm glad I did, but I don't know, it was, uh, it's, it's the way they do it in Iowa. If you, so many guys that showed up there, tried to do that, and then they're like, you know what, man, this sucks. I'm gonna get knocked out, I'm gonna get brain damaged. This is not what I signed up for, so they can leave and go home. I had numerous roommates that moved there and stayed with me. And I'd go to practice and come home, and all their shit would be moved out of the room, and there'd be a letter on the bed saying they left. So it happens all the time, man. So. Yeah.